Yeah, so in, in, in my view, uh, Sri Lanka is actually not a country. I, I'm always fond of saying the way to understand Sri Lanka from a, an outside perspective, from the way it runs economically and why it doesn't economically perform, is it is not a state. It is the world's largest private club. And that's the way to think about it. Everything here is a club from the state and the government down to how all major sections of the economy work, big business communities, certain business families, and what's called the, they call the license rajas, which act in concert with tightly controlling state control government ministries and politicians. It's all a club. That orange that I just drank, that's a club. A restricted supply, certain people have imported it, certain duties on it, you have to pay the price. If I buy an apple for my apple pie, it's a club. If I want to build, my building costs are higher. The steel reinforcement bars, tight little club, additional costs. The cement is the cement club. The tiles is the tiles club. If I try and import some tiles and have more choice, freedom of choice and open market, 60-70% duties. Sanitary wear, a club. Okay. Banks, a club. Finance, a club. Airlines, uh, state monopoly, etc., right? etc. Et so you have a combination of a huge state club with the same actors who flow between different parties. So of course it's a club. If you if you just hop over from one seat to another, it shows that it is just a fixed club of the same old same old people running stuff. Land is a club owned by the state, so you can't even get title and develop the economy through private ownership and being able to get bank mortgages. And as I said, the finance system itself is a club. And so, of course, if you have everything run with these tight little networks of, of what's called the establishment, but here everything is the establishment within an establishment within the establishment, and at the top of that establishment in the club sits, funnily enough, a few schools, Royal College, St Thomas's, and a few other things. That's the ultimate club. And to join it, you have to have attended one of those institutions and had a group of buddies called Machans here, the Machan system. And everything is Machan management. The club management is a Machan system. That you're meant to have known these people from the age of eight at school. If you're not part of that club, it's very difficult to break in. Now that is you know, the very opposite of a free open market economy that liberal economists like me believe is fundamental to economic growth. It's the opposite to the kind of Hong Kong model I was talking to you about that could be the answer to Sri Lanka's growth aspirations because the people are so dynamic, innovative, entrepreneurial, but they all have their hands tied in this series of oligopolies, monopolies, and little pub deals and license rivals that mean everything is very expensive and everything's tied up. And if you're in one of the top little club on the political side or the business side, you do very well. You drive a Range Rover, you're my customer here, God forbid, but there's not many of those people. But that makes the rest of the economy and its people poorer as a result and grow slower. And that is a great shame. Free the shackles, open the economy up, take away the thing from being a little private club. Government, just governing, this place could double its growth. But this club structure, it will never do that.